Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this one, we have an interesting horse for you. His name is Henry. He's a thoroughbred that was never at the track, never raced, anything like that, and was sold to an amateur owner and kind of started uh, presenting some problems that they're having with him. Most recently, um, a girl that was working with him, uh, she's not the owner, but she was uh, kind of working with him. Uh, she got bucked off of him. I'd ridden him, I think twice, and then the third time I rode him, he launched me pretty good. And uh, he was not accepting the saddle and they're having some issues. So today they're gonna show me some of the strategies that they've been using to help work through them. <laughs> One of the things I'm curious of, you were telling me that you put a teddy bear yeah. on the saddle. Jimmy! And then I'm gonna kind of give them my take on it and what I think's going on and what I think his training needs to focus on. Hope you guys enjoy this video. After you came, I think it was the day after you came, I found like he was real weird about his midsection. But now he's better. Until you put a saddle on him. I waited until you came to put a saddle on him. Okay. So I was like, I'm not doing that again. Because the last time I put a saddle on him, he mowed over me. Okay. Like stepped on my foot, like came, like just, and then took off bronking. Okay. One of the steps you guys always see me take in these videos is having the owner or handler, whoever's working with the horse, show me what they've been doing. And this is really important because I need to understand um, where the horse is at and I need to understand what the, the person handling the horse is or isn't doing that may be contributing to some of the horse's behaviors. Maybe not, but I need to know that and I need to have them show me what they've been doing uh, in order to help me give them the most accurate, specific answer possible. When he's had all the x-rays, he's been vetted. Definitely got tight with that saddle. Yeah. Out of so so far, you're you're trying to keep him calm. Yeah. By being very quiet with him. Yeah. And that will lead to him being underexposed. Now, one of the strategies that they used was putting a stuffed teddy bear on the saddle because they were thinking that part of the reason he, she got bucked off was because uh, he saw something above him and that startled him. And so by using the teddy bear, he might get used to that. Now, I've never seen this strategy used before, but I kind of wanted to see it. And uh, they named the teddy bear Jimmy, uh, kind of a spinoff of the TV show Yellowstone and Jimmy uh, kind of getting strapped to a horse and trying to buck him out. So. So as I'm watching uh, Henry, I'm starting, it's starting to become apparent to me that he doesn't need one particular thing done with him. There's not one big training tool or technique, um, one, one particular thing of accepting the saddle or accepting the rider. To me, generally, he needs to understand pressure better and he needs a more solid foundation before being ridden. We have to notice that Jimmy is a very sensitive horse and Jimmy, Henry. <laughs> We have to notice that Henry is a very sensitive horse, very introverted. He seems to try really hard, like he wants to accept things and be comfortable, but he gets scared real easy. Mm -hmm. And I could see why somebody could get bucked off of this horse very easily because it's the tolerance levels of him getting bothered are very thin. And so you did a good job of getting along with him where you moved around him very slowly and, and we're trying to keep him comfortable with everything the whole time. And that's great, we wanna be able to do that. But in order for him, to, this horse to get ridden safely, he has to have higher tolerances. He has to get more safe uh, to, to uh, work with on the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to, to improve those margins. And I'm gonna do that by exposing him to deeper levels or higher levels of rhythmic motion, uh, rhythmic pressure, where I'm asking him to move and give to it, and then also a steady pressure. And I'm really curious to see what his responses are to the steady pressure. So first I'm gonna do some uh, flag stuff. We'll see how he how he handles this. 
So it doesn't take long to figure out that horsemanship is more of a journey than a destination. It's challenging, it can be difficult, it can be emotional, it can be dangerous, and I think that it's important for everybody to have a mentor through that process. I would like to be your mentor, and I can do that through my Patreon page. We have detailed training videos on there, we have monthly giveaways, you can ask me questions about your horse or even do video coaching. I'll leave a link in the description below. Look forward to seeing you on there. And so one of the things you're gonna see is the way I move around him right off the bat is I'm gonna, if let's say my energy level and my motion is like a five would be like the, the perfect amount. Like you're not going too fast to scare him, but you're not going too slow. That's gonna take you all day either. I'm gonna try to be like a six, six, like out of 10. 10 would be like, I'm moving way too fast. Hey, slow down. You're scaring the horse. It's your fault because you're scaring him. You shouldn't expect them to handle you moving around that fast. Is that so you can go from a six, like you go back down yes. and it's like comfortable, but yes. like he's used, like, so yes. you're not going from a four to and it's surprising about a six. Exactly. And being like. So I'm just, my general mannerisms around this horse is I'm going to be like, hey, Henry, how's it going? You know, so I'm going to deliberately turn the volume up a little bit around this horse and just, just do everything a little bit quicker with, with how I, how I move. The other part of this is when he gets bothered by things, I, get, I have to make sure that I can help him recover and get comfortable with it. So like here, he's really bothered. So if we could ask him to lower his head and get relaxed, because what could happen is he could kind of be tolerating it and not accepting it. And if I release the pressure when he's in a tolerating state of mind, it's not gonna get better. He needs to ex get into an accepting frame of mind, okay? Also, another way to build deeper levels of things that's usually pretty easy is to just add motion to it. Doing it um, while they're walking or trotting can actually build a little bit more depth to it as well. See here, I went to move him off and he said, are you sure I have to move, you know? Mm -hmm. So now when I want him to move, I'm gonna like bring my life up and I'm gonna tap him here a little bit. So when I want him to move, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that energy of the flag. Because one of the biggest holes that this horse has is he's reading the energy of the situation. He's not reading my intention. Yeah. My intention is for him to be walking a circle right now. But he's reading the flag and he's not reading me. Yeah. My energy, my intention inside me is calm right now. Mm -hmm. The flag in my right arm is moving a lot. But my intention is very calm. And he has to learn to, to stay in tune with that. And what he's gonna learn is every time he gets calmer, the pressure goes away. Mm -hmm. Whenever he gets bothered, the pressure stays on. So he's gonna learn to train me. Yeah. That when he gets calm, I get quiet. Mm -hmm. When he's not calm, I get noisier. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, will, that will be helpful. So again, he's reading the, he's reading the uh, energy of the rope and then a lot of people watch this video are probably are like, you're scaring him, you're doing, I was like, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, this horse was being ridden and he can't handle a rope being tossed over his back. Yeah. Well, if I'm gonna try to ride him, I'm darn sure gonna toss a rope over his back and make yeah. sure he can be okay with that, you know? Yeah. So if it starts to take too long, I'm gonna redirect and change directions, try it on the other side. Um, so that's interesting. It was much, much easier on his left side here than his, his uh, right side. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is, he. this is too much, right? The Throwing that whole rope, it's taking him too long. At this point in time, I go, that's too much. He can't handle that. So I'm gonna slow things down. And I'm, I made my rope shorter. And I'm gonna kinda hang in here. And with the halter and lead rope, I'm trying to kinda pull and release. Yeah. There we go. So I'm gonna let him find relief here at a standstill. That's cool. Which again, is not a bad thing for him to start in motion and end up at a standstill. I'm not gonna start at a standstill. Yeah. That's the difference. So now I'm gonna move him again. It's not about getting him used to the rope being tossed over him. It's about him learning how to recover mm -hmm. and learning that when he gets calmer, you know. But also something I'm gonna be very aware of is notice at the end when I decided to quit doing this, his butt kinda did a quick little move. Anytime you see his movements get quicker, you can say to yourself, that was a right-brained response. Mm -hmm. that, and that's not the response you wanna ride. So one of the things that's mission critical with whoever's working with him, whatever they're asking him to do, wait until him to relax and for his feet to get slower and rhythmic mm -hmm. with how they move. Now, did you hear that noise? Yeah. So what does that mean when a horse goes A little anxiety leading the, yes. leading the system. Yes, 
he had to take a full breath. What's funny is you worked with him probably three or four times longer than what I did and we didn't get that response. Mm -hmm. That response came after the most difficult thing we mm -hmm. asked him to do today, which ended up being this. Yeah. So I just got him to decompress at a deeper level yeah. um, than old, uh, Jimmy? Old, Jimmy, old Jimmy did. Mm -hmm. And so basically because I asked him to do something harder, I signed him up and I made it that much harder for him to add tension. Mm -hmm. Also because I kept his feet moving, mm -hmm. he had to breathe to, yeah. to get relaxed. And so that's one of the key things is he's actually the most relaxed right now than he's been the whole time yeah. after doing something that was hard. Yeah. And that's, that's why this works. Mm -hmm. If this wasn't true, that it wouldn't, what I'm saying wouldn't work. I'd just be scaring horses everywhere. Yeah. But I do this to horses all the time, you know, thousands of them, and they get more calm and more relaxed yeah. and more settled and harder to bother. So this is one of my favorite tools that I think is very underutilized in the horse training community because they, I think they think it's only meant for roping cows or something. But, um, and I say this all the time, but Tom Dorrance used to say, it's not a bad place on a horse to hang a rope. And basically just the rope gets him used to just things touching him mm -hmm. all over. What's great about the Lariat rope is um, whatever part I put it on, I can pull this to make it tight. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the horse relaxes into it, I can put slack into it, mm -hmm. okay? And that becomes a really powerful thing because that feeling of something tightening on them without having a lot of actual physical pressure bothers them a lot mentally, emotionally. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. And I like to do this, all this stuff before I ever put a saddle on them mm -hmm. because by the time I go to saddle and I'm, to me the saddle is a maneuver. The saddle is something that I want them to get good at and get, get comfortable with, Yeah. you know. Um. Mm -hmm. They sail on that pretty well. So again, I'm putting just a light feel on it, mm -hmm. and that's what scared him. But I'm gonna teach him that when he recovers from that, that's where the relief is. Not panicking and trying to kick his way, fight his way out of it. Mm -hmm. So the, the just general theme is I'm going to try to instigate things that bother him. When he gets bothered, it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. When he recovers and when he starts to get more calm and confident with it, that's when the pressure goes away. Yeah. And bec because I'm doing it with more intensity, it's going to have a stronger effect. And mm -hmm. he's overall going to be you know, calmer with easier things. Yeah. The saddling, putting the stick and string over his back, that sort of stuff. That's the goal. Also, do you notice too how he's, when I'm doing this, even though I'm bothering him more, he's licking and chewing quicker. Mm -hmm. It's shortened up the time. It's, I'm kind of signing him up to it a little bit. Yeah. Getting him to be more committed, like pick one, be bothered or yeah. get unbothered. You know, it's like, this isn't as big a deal as you think it is. Not as much gray. It's more black and white for him. Yeah. See how much better of a response oh, that one boy. was? Yeah. Way better. So those are some steady pressure. So we've done, so far we've done some rhythmic motion. We've done some steady pressure. Now we're gonna do some rhythmic pressure yields. So now I'm gonna use pressure, um, but I'm gonna ask him to kind of yield to it at the same time. We could do this in different ways. Let me show you one that I used. This is a little bit early. This one's a, a more of an advanced yield for a horse of, of his level of training, but I, I want to show it to you because I think it'll be helpful for you. So let's say you have a horse that's like tolerating things, kind of standing still, but you want him to relax at a deeper level. What you, want them, what you want to do is create a way for them to participate in it. Yeah. Like we want him to lower his head down, okay? And so I also, we've identified that he gets more tight and bracy in this area yeah. when, he, you know, when he gets tight. And so I want him to kind of get exposed to some pressure here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some pressure here. And what I want this pressure to mean is lower his head down. So I'm gonna put some pressure there. Now he chose to walk off, that wasn't the answer. So I'm gonna use the halter to stop him and lower his head. My timing wasn't very good on that one, but but I want to sign him up. I want him to move. So he's exploring that moving is not getting relief, is it? No. So by him moving, the pressure stayed with him. When he stands still and lowers his head, the pressure will go away. I might so I slowed the pressure down mm -hmm. because he stopped. His head went down, the pressure went away. What this is, is it's a really direct way to have this conversation with him where it's like, hey, when you get bothered, 
getting faster running off doesn't doesn't equal relief. I'm, the gist of it is I'm teaching him how to recover. Yeah. And the be the best time to teach a horse to recover is when things are going well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a big misconception in the horse world. It's like usually it's like oh the horse got bothered and now they're doing this behavior now I'm going to try to fix it. Nope. Yeah. The best time to kind of bother a horse or do these things is right now when things are going well and there is no problem. Yeah. You know. I'm pretty happy with that one. You see, I went to reach for the lead rope and his head went down. Yeah. He's super smart. Yeah. So he's a, he's actually more trainable than I was thinking he was going to be originally. That's pretty clever for him to figure all that out in mm -hmm. that, that amount of time. It's pretty good. For this horse, it's not just exposing him to things, it's also building his, his level of understanding and yeah. getting the quality. So that tells us there's a high level of connection, he knows what to do, and there's a high level of position. His body's in, the, in a great position to do well whatever we're asking him yeah. to do. And his brain's relaxed enough to think about the actual- Yeah, exactly. What he's doing. And my, my philosophy on training is connection before position. Meaning I want him to understand what he's supposed to be doing before I care too much about how perfect his body is. Yeah. I do care about how, what his body's doing, like any good dressage trainer would, yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm gonna make sure he understands what I'm asking for first. Yeah. So it's just, it's not a which one's more valuable, it's which one comes first, in my opinion. Yeah. You can see how hard this is for him, mm -hmm. and pretty much every single thing I've given to him has been challenging for him. And so that's why it's like, it's not one thing, it's just he needs an overall yeah. little bit stronger foundation. Um, but he's, he is gonna be a more challenging horse because it's like, you gotta be real particular about all these things. Your timing has to be good too. Yeah, the timing has to be really good. The margins of error are thin. Mm -hmm. And when you put all that together, it's not super easy to train him, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Another thing that I would use with a horse like this is when he gets bothered, I would teach him to yield his hindquarters, and I would do this on his back as well, but I would start it on the ground. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be my go-to recovery strategy. I'm gonna bend him and yield his hindquarters. You see how fast his feet are moving here? Yeah. I'm not gonna quit doing what I'm doing until his feet get some concrete blocks on them and they start to move real slowly. And that's what I'll, when I'll quit. Because his hind, he uses the disengage move as almost an escape thing. Yeah. He flips his hip out really quickly yeah. And so I just observed him doing that many times throughout the training session. And so now I'm going to sign him up to that. I'm going to say, that's not the answer. The answer is moving your hind feet very slowly. See him slow down there? Yeah. Now I like that he's stopping, but I'm looking for them to move slowly. Because again, because he's introverted, we want to release him in a little bit of motion, not just standing still. Yeah. There. You see how they got a little bit slower there? Mm -hmm. So I'm just, there we go. I'm just t teaching him how to kind of deal with these things in a little healthier manner. Yeah. But can you see he's already got this like, all right, this guy, he keeps throwing all this stuff at me. You know, it's like, I we know. haven't even thought about riding him yet. We haven't yeah. even thought about saddling him yet. I know. And we've already found all these things to expose him to. And what I was telling you earlier when you were playing with him, this is where it would, for me, I would invest time. I think I could ride him safely today, um, but he doesn't need that. It's because no. it's, it's not about me riding him for, for my own ego to say I rode him. Yeah. It's about him having a good experience. Yeah. And the, the thing, it doesn't take much to bother him right now and hit for him to have a bad experience. And so I would rather get these margins a little higher on everything. And um, we don't need to up the ante because the ante's already. Exactly, up. exactly. It <laughs> would, it would literally level. just be for me and my ego than it would be for him because he's not ready for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You can see he's getting a little curious here. And so we just got to bring that out in him more, yeah. So I just wanted to recap here with Morgan. So to kind of tell me what you thought of the of what I did with him, and um, were there any takeaways that you had from it? Um, well, I thought it was great. I mean, I um, takeaways I guess like would be, I really liked the idea of like not, you know, you tend to want to make him feel comfortable, or I do want to make him feel comfortable. So being yep. quiet around him, um, and I totally like understand I need to like make him uncomfortable so that he can be comfortable kind yep, of yep um yeah educate so, yeah what, one thing i want to speak to to that idea a little bit is the more we educate horses the mm -hmm. less likely they are to end up in a bad situation yeah whether it's a mustang that's still wild or yeah. it's a horse that's in a rescue yeah. most of the time they're not super highly trained liberty yeah. bridalist riding dressage yeah. jumping horses no they're horses that are not educated that nobody took the time yeah. to develop these skills in them because once we take the time to uh, it takes a lot of work. It's mm -hmm. not easy to train a horse. It takes yeah. a lot of time, takes a lot of knowledge, a lot of hard work mm -hmm. uh, 
And once you put that time and effort into a horse, you're adding value to that horse. You're making that horse more valuable where it's more mm-hmm. likely to have a home for the rest of its life yeah. and not end up in a bad situation. Yeah. Mentally. And so where and so when I got here, you guys were already telling me we did find a good situation for him. So mm-hmm. tell us what Jake Beerbaum. Yep. He's gonna take him and um, put some um, training on him and so that he can yeah. be better prepared for his and uh, Jake mm-hmm. is a close friend of mine, yeah. and he has a YouTube channel, Pear Tree Ranch. So we've had other videos that we did together, so go check those out. But go over to his YouTube page, and I bet Jake will continue doing a follow-up series with this horse to keep you guys updated. So if you want to follow Henry's uh, progress and his his development, uh, go over to Pear Tree Ranch and uh, check him out. And I also, before we wrap up, I want to give you kudos for doing this. Like, yeah. it's, it's, you know, a lot of us have our egos involved in it and so if we made a mistake we don't want to tell anybody or share it with the world Mm -hmm. and so for you being confident enough and willing to share what happened and that you're having trouble and being able to ask for help and get a second opinion on things um, I think that's really great it speaks a lot to your character Um, so we appreciate you yeah awesome thank you that was great all right if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one (laughs) 